What if you fill the Grand Canyon with soda and drop Mentos in it? At first, this might sound like the most delicious science experiment ever. Imagine one of the largest natural wonders on Earth. But instead of layers of rock, it's filled with bubbly, sugary soda. Roughly four trillion cubic meters of it. That's enough soda to drown every fast food chain on the planet in refills for the rest of history. Now, soda is harmless on its own. Sure, it rots your teeth, but it doesn't exactly blow up the planet. The danger begins when we add Mentos. Everyone knows the trick. Drop a Mentos into a bottle of soda, and you get a geyser. But what happens when that geyser is scaled up from a two-litre bottle to the Grand Canyon? Let's start with the science. The mental soda reaction isn't chemical in the traditional sense. It's physical. The rough surface of the mentos provides millions of little nucleation sites where dissolved carbon dioxide in the soda can rapidly escape, forming bubbles. In other words, mentos just give soda an excuse to explode faster than it normally would. So... What happens when you toss a single Mentos into our canyon-sized soda bottle? Honestly, nothing much. The Grand Canyon is simply too big, and one candy isn't enough. It would fizz a little near the surface, then sink sadly into a sea of sugar. Kind of a disappointment. But this is not the YouTube video you clicked for. Let's say instead that we dump truckloads of Mentos billions and billions of them, into the canyon. Imagine planes flying over, raining mentos like candy hail. Now we're in business. The carbon dioxide trapped in that much soda is astronomical. If it all tried to escape at once, the pressure would launch a foamy eruption straight into the sky. We're not talking about a fountain you can drink from. We're talking about a white, sugary mushroom cloud towering kilometers high. It would be the largest soda geyser in history. How dangerous would it be? Well, first, the blast would likely obliterate everything around the canyon rim. The nearest towns would be buried in a sticky rainstorm. Cars, buildings, and probably a few unlucky tourists would be coated in caramel-colored sludge. And then comes the smell. Arizona would reek like a gas station soda machine for decades. But the real kicker is the sheer energy involved. If even a fraction of the carbon dioxide escaped violently, it would release energy, equivalent to a medium-sized volcanic eruption. Entire plumes of foam could reach the stratosphere, where winds would carry them across the continent. Imagine going outside in New York or Chicago, looking up, and realising those clouds overhead are made of Pepsi. And what about the aftermath? Eventually, the eruption would settle, leaving behind a flat brown desert filled with millions of tonnes of sticky residue. Everything would be coated. Rocks, animals, the Colorado River. And once the soda dried out, it would turn into a crunchy, caramelized wasteland. Archaeologists, thousands of years from now, might call it the Great Sugar Layer and assume we worshipped corn syrup. Now, if you're wondering whether it's technically possible to fill the Grand Canyon with soda, the answer is absolutely not. It would take every soda factory on Earth running at full capacity for millions of years the global supply of sugar would collapse. Civilization itself might collapse. On the bright side, dentists would become the richest people alive. So, what happens if you fill the Grand Canyon with soda and drop in Mentos? You get the world's stickiest volcanic disaster. You get rivers of foam drowning entire towns. You get soda rain falling on neighbouring states. And eventually, you get ants. Billions and billions of ants moving into the canyon, claiming it as their sugary kingdom. Would it destroy the planet? Number. 
Would it destroy Arizona? Almost certainly. Would it be hilarious to watch from space? Absolutely. Final diagnosis. Don't try this experiment. Unless you're an ant.